How fast can we build a down and dirty motor stand for my outboard motor? Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and that's what we're going to cover right now. If you're looking for a real video about how to build a proper engine stand, I have one right up here that walks you through step by step and everything that you need. I scribbled down some notes from that video to help me build this one, see if I have enough scrap wood. So I'm going to gather up my scrap wood and some of my other supplies, and let's see what we got here, if we can make a down and dirty stand. In my original video, I think I said that you need something like uh, four two by four by eights to build a stand. I got a two by eight that's probably four feet long. I got a two by four that's probably six feet long. And I got some of these. These are like, these aren't two by threes. They're probably three by threes with a notch cut out of them and some other stuff. But I think we got enough to make a stand. It ain't going to have wheels because I don't have any wheels. And you're gonna really like this. I have a thing here of assorted screws. I went through them and all of these are about two and a half inches long, but literally some of these are drywall screws. Some of these are brass. Some of them have round heads, some have uh, recess things, some are exterior treated lumber screws. It's everything. That's what we're gonna use. We got our chop saw, impact drill. We have our triangle, which they call a square because it's for making square edges. Tape measure, pencil, some blocks right there. I think we got everything we need. This thing is gonna have to be three feet tall just to clear just for this to clear the ground. And our base is 36. Or maybe we'll try to make this 37. We don't need to make it very wide. We could probably make it like 24 wide. Ha! I think I got enough wood here. Hey, these are almost perfect. I honestly did not pre-cut or go out and buy this wood for this. This is just stuff that I had laying around. Let's say we get started right now and see how quickly we can put together an engine stand. So those will be my base. Done. These will be braces. This will be my cross pieces. And this long one I'll use for my vertical. And this will be other cross braces. What do we decide? 24 cross? Let's do it. Yeah, we say measure twice, cut once. 24, 24. All right, good. Can this cut a 2x4x8? By by I don't know. So we got our two baseboards, two cross pieces. Now we need our tall pieces. So let's do them. Let's give ourselves some space and give, do them 37 inches. So these are our verticals. I'm going to put a V on there. Now let's measure the center of these boards to know where to nail our ver screw our verticals to. Half of 36 is 18. What I do is I wrap my line all the way around so that way I know where my center is when I go to put my vertical on. So 
So we're literally just eyeballing that. And let's stick a couple screws in here. I can't see with my glasses on. I'll use a couple of uh, ones that are tapered since this is going in the bottom. And let's get them started with the board laying flat first. So what I'm doing is that line, I'm just putting these screws right in on that line. Just going in a little ways. And then we're just gonna hold it to that. Get it square. Yeah, that's good. All right, that's one. Well, these didn't go all the way in. So sometimes if they don't go all the way in, you can back them out just a little and put them in again. Let's make another 24 inch cross member because we need at least two more of those. Let's make it out of this thing here. This is nice. Is it one of these longer than the other? How long is the longest one? Hey, the longest one is 48. I can cut it in half, and I've just made myself two more cross members. Sweet. I mean, it's kind of 48, it's close. That's right, this isn't gonna be even at the ends because I didn't square stuff off because we're doing down and dirty. Well, that wobbles around a lot. So we're gonna loosen it a little bit and then tighten it back up. That's better. My screwdriver bit's not in good shape. It's not happy. Okay, I know why people don't use brass screws. They're junk. So what I'm doing is I'm setting it flush against the bottom and against the vertical because that will make it its strongest it can be. And we'll come back and screw it in from the bottom after we're all done. But for right now, we're just gonna we're gonna screw it in from the front. Ow! Oh. Ooh! Impact bit in my thumb. So I injured myself. We're gonna take a little break. All right, didn't bleed long, wasn't bad. Hurts like the dickens right now though, so I'm down, a, uh, <laughs> I'm down a digit right now. What did we learn from this? I shouldn't have been rushing. You definitely shouldn't have your thumb right next to where you're using the impact screwdriver, putting a lot of pressure on it, because that's what happened. I was pushing right here and it slipped off the head of the screw and went into my thumb. So that was just stupid, the angle that I was working at and what I was trying to do. So I'm gonna try to be a little less stupid right now and finish this project. So I don't think we should count that little bit of time where I injured myself. We should just be able to pick up with me on that screw, same thing. So stopping the clock, restarting the clock there as if I never injured myself. Uh, I need some way to kind of brace this so that I can put these in here. Maybe I should put the bottom ones in first. really should have cut the two base pieces to be exactly the same length because I could make this a, a little off if I do it wrong, where it's 
a parallelogram, I think. I could just use my framing square probably and square it up as I'm going here. But that's another case of cutting corners, adding time to the project. So I'm putting two screws in each corner to help hold this stuff together. It kind of wants to fall in a little bit up there. It's probably a twist in one of my baseboards here. Once again, we're not starting with new lumber. We're using old wood I had laying around, so some of this might be a little funny. So we'll put the bottom screw in over here and not the top one right now. What we got here. Yeah, just got to bring that back together again. So we want to go about out here, out here, and here, and there. Marking my centers up there. I'm going to start the screws for this. Well, I can easily hold this right here with my hand away from the danger zone. So let's do that. I don't know anything about really doing stuff correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a 45 and then I'll set it on here and it'll tell me where to cut the other 45. And probably can just sort of rest this on here, come up with a plan like that, and oh, break my pencil. What I did is I cut it just a little bit big, which doesn't matter. I could have cut it a little bit small. I can just keep pushing it and working it. And then that's where we're going to go. All right, there's that, and there's that. And I can probably give it a little bit of a push to get that in there just right. So should we pre-drill our holes or should we just go for it? Yep, we're just gonna go for it. <laughs> that split right away. <laughs> hmm, maybe one should drill pilot holes first before they do this sort of thing. Yes. That means getting out of drill. If I just tacked this on the sides like I originally wanted to do, I wouldn't need to do that. I could just go straight on in. But because I'm going at an angle and I'm screwing through a thinner area, it's just not working as well. So we have this drill bit which should do exactly what I want to do. You see, it just pops right on in your impact drill to drill a pilot hole. That's a down and dirty engine stand right there. This motor has some weight to it. All done. So you can see here, I did my corners. Here's the first one I put in where it split it just a little bit. So then I drilled up here and then down here where it definitely split it bad. So I drilled and put two other ones in there. Of course we drilled up there, so that's good. 
So it's not scientifically perfect. It doesn't have wheels, but I built it for zero dollars using stuff I had. And it holds this old 7.5 horsepower Mercury just fine. Look at this, that's cool. Thunderbolt ignition. I don't know what that means. Thank you so much for watching. Here's another video picked just for you. And a playlist of videos similar to this one. Stay safe out there on the water.